Hey all, I'm Sean Gerber with Reduce Cyber Risk, and I've put together some training for small and medium businesses to understand cybersecurity and how you can implement that within your business. And this is a beginner set. We've got some fundamentals that are becoming out later on, but this will give you a good, great beginning of how you need to what you need to put in place to secure your business. And so we'll kind of go through the basics of it, followed up by the fundamentals that'll be in a later training later on. Okay, a little bit about myself. Um, Sean Gerber, uh, born and raised in the Midwest, and I was spent 24 years in the U.S. military. And as a first off, I started off as a recruiter. I also worked on airplanes as a mechanic, and then worked my way up <clears throat> to the point where I was uh, flying B-1 bombers. And as a weapon systems officer for the B-1s, basically I was able to to navigate, drop the bombs, do all those kind of things, and I did that for seven years. It was awesome. Totally loved it. Just just it was incredible. But what ended up happening was is the B-1 bomber went away, so they had to find something else for us to do. Well, I went out and started looking around for opportunities. This is back in 2000, 2001. And look for opportunities in cyber. Now, my background, I basically went to school to be an airline pilot, but I always had an affinity for loving the basically computers and how they work. So we saw this opportunity to be part of a red team. And what this red team is, is it acted like it's, they also called it information warfare aggressors. We used to act like a, uh, an adversary. So whether it's you know, from the United States to somebody other than the United States, Chinese, Russian, whoever it might be, and we act as an adversary to potentially hack into facilities, also to end up physically breaking into those facilities as well. And we would take that lessons learned and then we would teach other people on how we did it and, and how, to, how to watch for it, how to avoid it, and how to mitigate that risk. So I did that for a few years. Totally loved that. I mean, what a you couldn't ask for a better job. And I ended up being the squadron commander of that organization. There was about 82 people in that in that organization. And it was a great time. Totally loved it. And and so what we ended up doing those during that period of time, I was able to get my CISSP, which is your certified information systems security professional, uh, CISSP. And I also was able to get the law of data security and investigations. So how do you deal with investigations and so forth? So those are some of the certs that I was able to get. Um, and the, the cool part about that, though, is I learned from when being a hacker and working with the 177th Information and Warfare Aggressor Squadron or Information Aggressor Squadron, what I learned from that was how the adversary thinks. Now, granted, this changes. It's been a while, a few years since I've done it, but bottom line is the adversary still thinks the same way. They may use different techniques to get in and to steal your data, but they still, they come right down to it. They think the, pretty much the same way. And adversaries are just like anybody else. You're the attacker, I should say. These people are looking for ways to steal your stuff, but they're looking for ways so that they don't get caught. So, and to be honest, they're lazy just like me. They're looking for the easiest way in with the least amount of work that they can make the maximum amount of return. So that's kind of where the, the, the cyberspace is going. So a little bit more about me. If I was in for about 18 years of being a information war, or in, in the information security business. So I've been doing this since 2000, 2001 and went through being a, a squadron commander for the aggressor squadron, then left that and became a, a senior security architect with a very large multinational company. Now, doing that, I was able to learn how enterprises secure their networks. What do they do? How do they handle it? How, what are some of the best security mechanisms in place? And what are some not so good mechanisms in place? And the cool part about all of that is that you, you learn that in many big enterprises, small businesses are the same way. They just have smaller systems. And the, the sad part is, though, is many of these small companies, these small and medium sized companies, they, they don't have the expertise to help them secure their networks. So in many cases, they're kind of left off basically to fend for themselves and they're hoping the wolves don't get them bottom line i also worked on a security operations manager uh, in a security operations center and what that basically is is it's the brains behind the security within an organization especially a large enterprise so all of the the, the when you click on a, a link or when you go to a site that all creates a log file and those log files go to this brain this big brain and this brain then has set up alerts and rules that would flag on if somebody was doing something that they shouldn't be doing so that's kind of what I did. And we worked 24-7 uh, with a very large enterprise. We had over 140,000 uh, people within this enterprise. And, and so I was a security operations manager for that. I then moved on to be the security operator or the chief information security officer for a large multinational company. It's a multi-billion dollar company, and we've got business all over the globe. So basically from China to the Americas and into Europe. So it's a very large multinational company. 
Well, I'm their security officer and I help them secure their data. So from securing their process control networks, which is basically where their manufacturing occurs, to securing their HR data, to also securing their highest intellectual property and, and what should we do to protect it. So I get the full gamut. So what you get with me, and I'm just basically trying to sell myself here on this, is you get from me someone who has gone from being a hacker, who also flew military airplanes, who understands how enemies think, to also then moving up through all the major corporational the um, roles within a corporation to, to understand cybersecurity. Now, does that mean that I know everything? By all means, no. Okay. If, if you hear anybody that tells you that they understand all of cybersecurity and they've got it figured out, run, just run away. Because bottom line is they don't. This stuff is changing so fast. But that's a little bit about me and how I can help you potentially secure your business. And, get, and the bottom line is to give you some good training. So who is this course designed for? And, and you'll hear it from, I, I take this training and I output the, these training videos and I put them on audio as well. But so that way, if you listen to it in your car, but who is this course designed for? It's designed for business owners, IT business managers, or limited people with IT knowledge and skill. Okay, so if you, if you have an internet introductory knowledge or you have some knowledge, but not necessarily in security, this is a great course for you. Okay, and great training for you. Who is this not for? Well, if you're looking for a high-tech solution, this isn't it, okay? Bottom line is this is some training that's gonna give you what you need to know, the basics, but it's not gonna tell you, yes, you should use this firewall and you should configure it this way. Not gonna happen, okay? It's just too many nuances and too many differences for that to actually be effective for you. Uh, it's also for the really technically savvy person, th they may come away from this a little disappointed. Now, I say that, that there's gonna be information in here that you'll be able to use, no question about it, but it may not meet the, the level that you're wanting to get down in the weeds. And how would you, how basically, how would you configure your firewall that separates your process control network from your business network? And would you use multi-factor authentication on that? And how would you configure that? It's not going to get into that. It's going to get into talking about why multi-factor on those firewalls is important. But realistically, I'm not going to get to that level of detail. So kind of just set the stage on what you should expect.